Hey, where you been, eh? Good to see you're healthy. The Count's gone, but I'm still around, aren't I? This world be pretty nice, but with all the peace and whatnot, I like it. Oh, and have you seen Nastasia? She was feeling right down, so I want to take her to eat some of Saffron's vittles. But I can't find the lass. Hey, hey now, don't go getting the wrong idea, eh? We're just chums, and I like to make me chums feel good and bubbly, eh? That, that, that's all. Looking at her being sad makes me get all weepy. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Super Paper Mario. Last time, we defeated Dementio and restored peace to the realms. I say realms because I don't remember how many there are. This time, or actually also flop side and flip side are counted as separate realms. This time, we're going to be tying up loose ends, and it all starts by using the return pipe. And then by going to chapter 2 2. There's no title. Merle's Mansion. You never thought we'd see this place again, or maybe you did if you thought you'd play the game yourself, which you should. Or uh, watch the LP again, which, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was wondering why I was going in my inventory, but this is why. For whatever reason, whenever something major happens in the game, it unequips my plant, and that's not a good thing. I like my plant. It's very nice. It's miraculously still alive. And so I want to wear this thing as a testament to the miracle that is this plant. I can't go through this door. Flip. Now we can go through the door. See, you have to be able to see the door to go through it. You can't just open the knob. And, just like we just met Oh Chunks, Merle can, or not Merle, Mimi can be found in Merle's mansion. Well, hi there. Big welcome. Welcome to Merle's mansion. I'm Lady Merle's handmaid. My name's Mimi. But you can call me Mimikins if you want. Does this seem familiar? Well, it's not a repeat of, or we're not just completing the chapter again, because it is indeed different, because T. So, are you surprised or what? Merle hired me on for real this time. Yeah, to take care of the place while she's gone. She's usually in flop side, so I just pretend like this whole place is mine. Take a look. I'm turning this place into my own little stable of cutie pies. And actually, in my own time, I did explore this area. And I couldn't find any of the cutie pies she was mentioning. Uh, the level seems to be more or less the same. Oh, we can't catch up to it. Well, <laughs> I tried. They, they accounted for that. All right, now that that is done, there is another chapter that we have to go to, which is... I can't use... I re Really? I have to solve the stupid puzzle? Are you kidding me? I want... Just let me... Got that. Get over here. You know what? I'll be right back. The next place is Chapter 7 4. The Over There. Yeah, that's right. I have to traverse the Over There <laughs> again. Again. And it's not going to be fun, but hopefully, memory can serve me well. It's already not, actually. Uh. Hopefully memory can serve me well and I can get through this place pretty quick. I will not commentate this, I will just cut it out. So, be right back. Oh hey, that wasn't so bad. I'm already at the Rainbow Bridge. That, that really only took about two minutes. Thankfully my memory served me better than, uh, better the second time around. So, if we go to the palace... If you last remember, we parted with this place on some sad and sober terms. Ooh, no, that's nice. And if we go back here, we will see that it truly ended happily because here is Love Bee. Greetings, how art thou? Ha ha ha, thou hast a very confused look on thy countenance. Thou art wondering how I returned to life? Well, that is a secret. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Truth be told, I know not. But who careth? I am back. Mother and father have been all over me since my return. They're so clingy. I guess it is my fault for being so cute. Well, thou should come play whenever. Mother, father, and I are always, are always hither. Yeah, love bees back and alive. And there is new dialogue for uh, her parents as well. 
Thou hast done such an amazing job, such truly amazing work. Thou hast saved all worlds. Now all doth smile again, and love be hath returned. Thou hast fulfilled thy promise. I knew thou wouldst. I owe thee so much. Thou and thou friend, thou and thy friends are heroes indeed. Thank thee. I heard the news and came running, and I saw love be. I could not believe it. It was a miracle. I feel such anguish that we put this child through so much. Now we are going to make up for all of it by loving her as much as we can. And we owe it all to you for saving all the worlds. Thank you so very much. Be sure to come see me when your games end. I will tip the scales in your favor. So, one of my favorite characters is not dead. And thus I am happy. Love B has hope to be seen in another Paper Mario game. And with that, there is there are just two more stops left to make. And one of those is quite important. See you guys in a second when I cut back. Not next episode. Welcome back to Chapter 3, 4! We are at Francis's castle. Many of you probably know what's coming, but for those who don't, you might notice that my... My inventory's changed a little bit. You can see that I can I have 999 coins. I sold everything that I own, except for the heal items I had in my pockets, because I actually need those, but I sold all of my gold bars and had exactly enough coins to do what I'm about to do. Let's switch over to Peach, go into the castle. If you'll remember, we need Peach to get past the security because She's apparently a totally hot babe. The game lagged a little bit there, but that's fine. So we can go over to the door. And the kitty lasers will not be sicked, sucked, sicked upon us, I guess. They won't be used on us, that's what I'm trying to say. And we can talk to Francis. Man, that's actually a big camera. Do you see that? It's as big as Peach is. Okay, we can talk to him. When I see something super rare, I must own it. But trying to hold a digital butterfly against her will landed me in the hospital. So I'm, um, I think I'm done with that stuff. This time, I harnessed my inner nerve to create something beyond high technical. Dying to see it, aren't you? Behold! My masterpiece, a one-to-one -one scale replica of Tippy with real fluttering action. I like to call her Tiptron. Hey, that's not my name. I'm Tippy. Did you hear that? She can perfectly replicate Tippy's voice. Tiptron can even flutter. She's pretty much the pinnacle of high technicality. Tiptron earned me the coveted elite nurse status on the Digibutter.nerr forums. Oh, would you by any chance be interested in buying her? I'm saving for Starship x not issue 1, so I'll sell her for just 999 coins. This is a sweet deal on a super rare collectible, what do you say? Now, I have tried this in the past, and when I say past, I mean a failed recording. If we say don't buy it, nothing happens. It does not go down in price. We just don't get it, so we actually have to buy it and pay 999 coins. Nerr, I knew you couldn't resist something this high technical. You are now the owner of the only Tiptron in the entire universe. And with that, we're flat broke. But at least we have a friend? Tippy's robot replica Tiptron has joined your party. She looks and talks just like the real Tippy. Well, are you ready to go? That's it, that's right, we have Tippy. Now she's a little bit different from Tippy, because if you have her analyze your main party member, I found out she says something apparently pretty special. Thanks to you, every world is safe. We are grateful for your selflessness and courage. At least, that's what I think she would say. It's so sad, she knows she's a replica, but doesn't want to embrace that and and realize that she's made to copy something that Francis thought was perfect she's not even unique and she's just ah, it's so sad 
That's Francis, a chameleon who lives for anime, games, and comics. He may not know a lot about a variety of subjects, but he is a master of geek lore. He constructed me. Constructed... Me. No, no, no! I'm Tippy! I wasn't constructed by anyone! It's so sad! Oh man. That's so sad. Well, I mean, at least Francis managed to make uh, a, I almost said omniscient being, no, a sentient being, but still, she's, she has such a big burden that she's trying to live up to the person she's never even seen, and who everyone misses, and probably looks at her in a strange way, because they know that she sounds and acts like the real Tippy, but she's not. It's so sad. Alright, well, now that we have Tiptron, let's break her in, which sounds even worse, by going to the last stop in our adventure. If you'll remember, the Samur Kingdom was destroyed before we could complete the gauntlet of the Samur guys. Now, it's back, and there's only one level. Well, there's the first chapter, and so we're going to be completing that in the remaining episodes of this series. I'm not exactly sure how far upwards we are on time, but I'm going to tackle at least the first section this episode. Well, maybe. Depends on what Future Pal decides. If this episode is, is pretty lengthy in time, he'll just cut it here. But, he will maybe cut it or not? I don't know. I don't know. Future Pal's a weird person, and he's also stolen from Proton John. But, we will see what his mood fits and what he thinks by ha by hitting yes welcome back to chapter 6 1 no title but I will call it the Samur guy showdown because I think that's actually what it was originally called all right this is it the final 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 battle there are no pits that we have to do. We don't have to go through the flopside pit, although I was a little bit worried when I originally found out that I would need 999 coins to uh, to buy Tiptron. But, thankfully I did not have to complete anything off screen to get all those coins, uh, but this which makes this the actual final battle. So, let's go with let's go with Carrie. Bowser Carrie with Tiptron who, if I can be honest Tiptron looks cooler than Tippy. Because she's smoother, she's not all pixelated, and Francis did a pretty good job on making Tiptron. I'll have to admit, he is definitely a, a geek master. So, uh, let's see. We stomp you before, yeah, yeah. Wait, you're that challenger from before? You fled this land like a crying whelp. The hole in the sky is gone, but the challenge stands until a victor is found. If you desire the king's treasure, step forth and challenge my skill. Leave the palace before the 100th fight ends, and your progress will be lost. And with it, your family's honor! Make a note of this. Dishonor on your whole family. Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow, and I'm sunk. So yeah, I'm going to be completing all of these. Uh, I'm not going to bother skip- wait, 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 wait. Did you see that? Your skill is strong, your master has taught you many ancient techniques. May we cross... 10? Calls again, Challenger. A lot of question marks there. Why is he? Why do we? Oh, oh, he was Jade Blooper. That's what he was. Okay, but still, that was a weird comment, and I'm gonna start saying that to everyone I meet. Wait, may we cross tentacles again one day? <clears throat> I see you. Look upon Hill with eyes, keeper of the second gate. You run along the earth, attacking immobile blocks, and I see you. You leap above deep pits, dodging wandering beasts, and I watch you. Soon you will fall into battle by my merciless hands, and I laugh at you. Round two fight. I won't be doing. I won't be giving all these guys voices, but the ones that I find funny and interesting, I will. Come on, come on. Now you can't run forever, which is why you decided to embrace your fate and embrace my fire breath. Ow! Right in the eye. You did not wither beneath my cold, unflinching stare, and so I am defeated. But defeat and victory are equally meaningless to one such as I. I will remain in the distance, waiting without remorse, and always watching. This is old man Watch It, son. And his name was Hill with Eyes. Oh, I just got that, wow. 
Hill with eyes. The, you know, the hills that have eyes in the Mario series. He's named after that. An opponent blows in. My name floats like an ill wind for I'm Puffing Fist, Guardian Third Gate. I'll send the... Yeah, sure. Whatever. You're going to die. You... These early fights are pretty meaningless because I can hold down on the D-pad and instantly defeat all of these guys. Alright, goodbye. So yeah, I'm not sure how Future Pal is going to designate and separate out these episodes, but I will trust his judgment and make sure I make it easy for him because things don't go well for Future Pal when I make things hard for him. Uh, Flightless Bird, I remember you. So many of these guys are the same, obviously because, you know, we're going through the first 24 floors again. But one, past that, they do start getting new, so that's that's kind of neat. But yeah, I realized the other day when I I said in an episode, uh, let's see, I'm not sure how long ago that was, but I said, you know, I I mentioned I haven't mentioned Future Pal in a while, and it's kind of odd because back in Okami, I mentioned him all the time, but uh. And also, I found it funny that it, I just kind of shamelessly stole him from Proton John, but, I mean, it's, I mean, it's unique, because it's Future Pal, not Future John. It's completely unique, just like I am, right? I'm, I'm special, I'm unique, right? Right? I'm not. I'm not that unique. I mean, I, I'm a content creator, of course I steal things from other people. Uh, consider this haiku. A challenger comes under the darkening sky. This was one of my favorite guys because of Wiggity Wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> and then his ending haiku is also pretty good. But I mean, that's that's not a bad thing. Proton John is probably one of my favorite LP -ers. Uh, I don't know why I put a question mark there, but he definitely is. Come on, man. You're the... Man, no. How am I taking damage to this guy of all people? I took four damage from this guy because I was talking about Proton John. The challenger came. Now my face wiggles in pain. Wiggle, wiggle, wig. Wiggle on, warrior. Wiggle on. But yeah, he's probably one of my favorite commentators. He just does. He's also one of the originals, but he has a really good balance between times when he's commentating and times when he's quiet. I, I don't know how he does it, but he manages to make his complete silence entertaining. And he's also, he has a, a pretty, a pretty quick wit, and he's, he knows how to break games, so that's, that's definitely a, an aspect of his, his content that I can appreciate, because breaking games can be quite enjoyable. It can be pretty funny. Uh, there's, actually, when, whenever I let's play, uh, Twilight Princess, there's a portion that I found that you can, you can break so hard, oh my word. In the uh, the final cutscenes of the game, or rather, in the final battle, uh, you can equip the iron boots, if you so choose. I don't know why you would, but I did, because I was curious about something. And I discovered that if you wear the iron boots in the, uh, the final battle and beat the final boss with the iron boots on, they'll stay on for the rest of the game, which means the rest of the cutscenes will have him. Now, there's a portion where he runs up a hill, right, to go see someone. I'm trying to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, so you, I'm trying to keep it pretty vague. Uh, but he runs up a hill with the iron boots on, but the game never was intended to have the iron boots on, so he doesn't slow down like you would if you actually had the boots on. So he runs full speed with these things on, and it plays the, the uh, sound effect for when he is running, a bunch of times. It just loops it over and over and over while he's running, and it ruins every last cutscene in the game that Link is in, because the, the sound is full volume, and so it just interrupts all possible semblance of, of bravado you could have, because there's just this crashing every time you do anything in the cutscenes. It's, it's pretty great. I, I found it quite enjoyable ruining the game like that. Alright, what about you? Uh, this is room 10, yeah. Aren't, aren't, I think there was one of these guys every single floor. This guy is actually, it's kind of hard to deal with these guys because if you jump immediately, you can get hit because they'll just swing. So you kind of have to run away. You can't just hold down because he's in the same place as all of the other ones, but his hitbox is bigger, so he can, he can reach you more easily. All right. Try not to take that much damage because, like, they said there are a hundred of these these arenas or these fights 
Elm Gate, place power. I remember this guy. He he places the coins in blocks. I'm mainly going to be skipping past the text until I start. Oh boy. Until I come across. No, 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 no. This is one of the ones where I need Barry. Uh, Barry's down here. No! Go away! No! Go uh, away! You're so annoying. Got him. And maybe can can I deal damage to him? There there it is. Smash that panic button. No. Really? I took so much damage to that guy. That is not good. That is not good at all. Also, speaking of, of damage, how, how far am I away from a level up? Oh, I'm pretty close. Okay. That's not bad. So I, I might get one last level up this Let's Play. Uh, that, that would be nice. And, and quite fitting, actually. Because my stats have, are pretty high. And if you'll remember, actually, thinking about it, uh, hopefully I get a damage increase. Because if you think about it, uh, Bowser doubles the attack damage boost from levels, right? He has he always has double the damage of the rest of the party. But also, because of the cards I got, it's doubled again. So if I get a, a level up and that gives me uh, one attack, that's actually four attack, which is pretty good. Okay, uh, you can die. Let's see, what was I talking about before that? I, I don't remember what I was talking about. I'll talk about his demise because he's dead. Alright, he's out of the way, and let's go. What was I talking? I completely blanked on what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, I was talking about uh, Toilet Princess and how breaking games is fun, and that's why I like Proton John. It is pretty fun. I'm trying to think of other ways to break games uh, that I've discovered. Well, I mean, there's obviously the... Uh, <laughs> the... What was it? Man, I can't... There's obviously... You know, just random glitches that you discover, and then there's ways to break games that actually makes it more enjoyable, like, uh, Smash Bros. I mean, if you- could you imagine a competitive scene without L- this is Melee and Project M. Without L canceling, without wave dashing, and maybe- hmm, I don't want to say without DI, because you probably wouldn't- it wouldn't be that different, it would just be you die earlier. Although combos would be a little bit stronger, so I guess without DI as well. That, that's not a good world, like, that's not entertaining. There's no, there isn't really much outplay potential. There's just dash dancing, that's it. He's been hit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you revert back to earlier meta's tier lists, uh, you'd have Marth be, being fairly low on the tier list, I believe. Uh, and then, I think Sheik was top tier for a while there, way back in the day, before they discovered a lot of techniques. And then Fox and Falco, took the throne as the best characters probably I, I'm tempted to say in Smash period because if they were pitted against anyone else in the series even Meta Knight they would have the movement you know the wave dashing the the shines to and the shines were transcendent in that game in melee so they would not clash so it, it doesn't matter that Meta Knight has higher priority uh, they have transcendent priority which is better I think no, 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 they're, they're not transcendent. It just makes them invulnerable. That's what it was. Yeah, so it doesn't even matter Yeah, they would I'm pretty sure they would beat anyone in their respective game Okay, uh, the world grows clammy and sweaty palm is dead or he's not dead, but he's he's vanquished So that's nice So with my some of my research for this I found out that uh that the Samur Kingdom is separated into four different chapters. Uh, one covers each quarter of the the match, so I'm not sure, once again, how Future Pal will handle this, but it does make it pretty easy in case you run low on health, because then you can just, you know, you can leave, buy more items, come back uh, at, you know, say, room 75, and continue your conquest. So it makes it pretty convenient, not like the Pits of 100 Trials. They really made this to be a final gauntlet, not an actual trial. Just kind of a... I think a way to reflect on the game. Because there's so much humor here. There are battles. And it, it just has some of the best aspects of the game in one, in one world. Come closer. I'm just a harmless leaf on the trim lawn of the 18th gate. Hachi! No, I'm Harry Arantula of the grass. I leap upon your head and bite your earlobe. Ha! You can do that. Wow, ow. Never mind, you can't do that. chip 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 -de. Your earlobe, it is like iron. I skitter away. 
Yeah, you do that, bro. You skitter away like the scum you are, bro. All right, through the next door here. Let's run slowly and continue with our zero mortals plan because we're we're really destroying everyone in this world. I mean, they're they're the only people we've seen besides the ninjas and as I shake the controller there. And so we're really just defeating everyone. We're we're playing we're pulling a Zamasu and we're basically we're basically untouchable now, which is pretty sweet. Man, that that's saga is getting so good in a uh, Dragon Ball Super, which I've been watching subbed because I d I'm not I'm not Nova. Oh wait, sorry. This guy's my favorite guy. Smoosh. To rolling thwomp, there is one thing best in life, rolling. Squish. I roll over you and make you flat like sheep a sheet of paper. But yeah, Dragon Ball Superman. I'm not I'm not pulling a Nova and waiting for the uh the dubbed to come out because it's just it's so good it's so amazingly good that I just I can't wait for that and besides I think they're going to be oh wait 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 just a second no 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 why do you not squish for rolling th thwomp rolling and squishing is not the same as it was you go now I have lost passion for squish dude he's he's so good it's I, I love the dialogue of this game but, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, Uh, I believe that they're making, they're starting work on the dub this year. I know the, uh, the voice actor for Beerus, he posted on his Twitter that, uh, that he's recording lines for Beerus. So, I mean, it's happening. It's just not, probably not going to happen until next year or very, very late this year, which I... I don't want to wait that long. I've been already watching the show for for quite a, a long time. We're, we're three, four sagas in now, and I would be missing all of that if I was waiting for the dub. And Nova is, is waiting for the dub, so she doesn't even know what's going on right now. And it's really great. It's gotten intense. It, it almost feels like Xenoblade right now, because there's... Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Snap. I, I would spoil both Xenoblade and, and uh, Super, but... Ah, uh, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to have a spoiler warning. Wow, that was that was a good jump. Nice, good job, me. Subconscious me. It's kind of a bad jump because he jumped at the same time, but it worked out. I got the height advantage. I got the high ground, as they say in Star Wars. But uh, but yeah, it's so good. Oh man, I I'm tempted to say that it that the current saga is better than the Cell Saga, which is which is prior to. Super was my favorite saga, and Cell, I mean, it's kind of obvious, is my favorite Dragon Ball antagonist, so I'm tempted, but I, I, there are a lot of people trying to make calls on that right now. Ow, I had time that late. There we go. Uh, jump, burn, oh, I could do that. Oh, I didn't think of that. I could stun them with the, uh, with Barry and then burn them. That actually works pretty well. But there are so many tri people trying to make rash judgment about uh, Dragon Ball Super, and they're doing it, you know, at the beginning or middle of a saga when not everything's been revealed yet, and it's just, it's really sad. I, uh, I saw, I was looking through threads today on, uh, just random forums. I think GameFAQs was one of the forums I was looking at, which is, shows how, how deep I'll search for <laughs> a way to back up my opinions. And, uh, I saw some people two months ago, they were talking about one of the antagonists, and they said that he was a, he, they said he was a, a subordinate, almost seemed like a subordinate carbon copy of another character, and I'm trying not to spoil it, but it, it, it was clear that they were making this comment before maybe two or three plot twists that made that comment super ironic. It's again, I can't really say this, but... Whoa! Reflector man! Reflector man! No, reflector man. Burn. How did that not hit him? No, okay, that doesn't work. Come on. Nice, I hit him. And... Hit him with that, and... It, how is he not dead? How is he not dead? Reflect them! And jump. No, no, jump. No, that doesn't work. I need to stop using that strategy. Man, he did a- <laughs> He's been dirted? What? 
What on earth? What did I miss here? You have shamed me! You are truly a champion. A filthy champion, but a champion nonetheless. Now you may go and prove your filth to even stronger Samurai guys. Okay, I feel like I missed some context here. Uh, we're close to a level up, so I won't heal myself. Oh, and we're actually at the end of the chapter! Okay. Uh, I guess I'll end? I won't do the outro just in case Future Pal is keeping these episodes together, but I will see you in a second, maybe?